So now I'm going to look at the charts in this workbook. If we click to the charts page, um, you've got the three charts that we asked for, but there are some problems with the charts. If you notice, each of these charts, none of them have the month name showing in them. That's down to the way the data was selected. Also, the charts are all on one sheet, and the question asks you to put them on a separate sheet. So I'm going to first off, I'm going to put these on a separate sheet, each of them, and show you how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is select the chart, and I've just clicked on a, an empty area up here or here. It's fine. Now I'm going to right click, and first time it may come up with move here, copy here. Try clicking again, and you should get a long menu. On that long menu, you've got move chart. So this is a simple bar chart. So I'm going to click on move chart, then select new sheet and give it a name. So I'm going to call it, well, I'll call it column chart. Okay, there we go. And that's now created a new sheet called column chart, which is the name I gave it. And you notice this sheet doesn't have any grids on it or anything. This is a different type of ch um, sheet called a chart sheet. And this is specifically how you put a chart on its own page. Okay, and then we're going to go back. And I'm going to do that for the same for this one. This is a pie chart. So I'll right click there, select move chart, and I'm going to call that one pie chart. Okay, and back to the original charts sheet. And I'm going to do that. This one's got some additional problems which I'll go through in, at the end, but. We're going to move this over, new sheet, and call that multi column chart or something like that. Okay, so we've now got these three. We've got the column chart, the pie chart, multiple column chart, and this charts, which is now empty. I'm going to get rid of that by right, right clicking and selecting delete. So going back to your column chart, let's start with that. At the moment, it's got the total for the months, um, and it's got three months, but it hasn't got any month details. Now, the reason it's got that is because when you selected your data for the chart, you didn't select this month column. And I'll show you how to change that. If we go back to column chart. If you right click anywhere on the chart and go to select data, you'll see that what's happened here is you've selected these five okay, and we're going to just select all of these but I'm also going to select the month and to do that I need to hold down the control key while I do it because if I try to select this without holding the control key down it removes the original selection so I end up with just the months but not the total so if I want to add something to an existing selection, I have to hold down control, click and drag, and then finally let go of the mouse button, then let go of the control key. And you can see I've now got this selected and that selected. This won't work in Google Docs and it won't, uh, sorry, it won't work in the online version of Excel. You'll need to go into the Citrix and uh, remote desktop. You have to access the uh, college desktop and use the full version of Excel to do this. Okay. I've only got two columns selected. I've got the month column and the total of month, so I don't need to include the tiles. So I'm going to leave the tiles for now. Click on OK, and you can see immediately that's picked up the month names. The reason it was doing one, two, three was because it didn't know what to put there. We had to include the text. Every time you do a chart, you're going to need to include some form of text to describe the numbers as well as some number values. Otherwise, you'll get that one, two, three, four. So let's look at your column chart. It all looks good. We've got a chart to show the total in months. We don't need to put chart to show. We can just put um, we can just put total for each month. For each month. And that would be fine. And you notice I haven't used capitals. I've just used it at the beginning. If there were a, a proper noun, like the name of a thing or a person or a place or an organization or something, then I would use it. So if it was the total for, I don't know, Abracadabra Limited for each month, I would put Abracadabra Limited in cap, uh, starting with capitals. So total for each month. Uh, you formatted this correctly. So we've got total for months. Um, it's quite, it's worth doing 
just getting in the habit if you've got a unit so for instance you've got um pounds it's just putting at the end of there brackets and then a pound sign also you notice this box is is bigger than the text the reason it's is because there's a blank line see that cursor there there's a blank line at the end if you just click in the empty space you'll see this cursor and you can just press backspace and that will delete that um, let's have a quick look months is okay there's no blank line there so and that's formatted the same you've got consistent formatting that's good this box could probably do with being a bit nearer the middle and I'm using this little circle here as a guide for where the middle is there we go so that now looks like it should do we haven't got any legends or anything We'd, what we don't want is um is a little blue box that says months or something like that because we we can tell that from the rest of this okay so that's how we do the basic column charts the multiple column charts got the same problem we can see we've got a blue and an orange column and it just says one set one and two uh, data i would change that to, to value rather than data When you're talking about numbers, you don't want to use just data. You should tend to want to use value or something like that. So let's fix this one, two, three, four, and we do that the same way. Select our data. Let's go back to our chart, and again, we can see we've selected set one and set two, but not the month that describes it. And because I'm going to be selecting three columns, I'm going to include the tiles. So there's my tiles, and then go down. Click on OK, and you can see it's now picked up the actual month name there we still got a slight problem in that there's something going on weird down here we've got this blue square and an s what that is is when you first created it you i, I don't know what one but you've you've put the legend which is a bit that says set one and set two there down at the bottom um and i don't quite know why but you it's one of that and i think what's happened because that went off screen you think tried to create another one with this data set A, data set B. We don't need that. We've got, so we've got, let's look at the components we've got. We've got a tile. We've got this axis tile, which shows what these are, and these are in pounds. So like I said in the last question, I'm going to put the pound sign there. And the months. We All we need on there is just month. Months or month. Okay, and I'm going to format these to make them stand out a bit from the, the month names and make sure they're consistent so we've got bold on both of those and we can now see that set one is blue set two is orange so that now works as a chart if um if we'd needed to add this legend or the legend hadn't, hadn't been able to access we could have just gone in and gone legend and we could have removed that and then re-added it and if you re-add it it may put it here in which case we can just right click on that format legend and that gives us an option to put it on the top bottom left right I'm going to put mine at the bottom and there we go we now got the legend now I can close this by clicking on the plus okay so we've got the multiple column chart there is a tutorial if you get if you end up with series one and series two instead of set one and set two which is what would happen if you hadn't selected the tiles then there's a tutorial on the on the uh, spreadsheet task sheet explaining how to fix that and then finally we've got the pie chart we've got the same problem here because we've got this is just showing the values of each segment as one two three four five six and that's a giveaway to me that we we haven't selected our text so i'm going to right click same thing select data and again we've got the total for month but no month so let's select the month i'm going to add that in So month there, okay. And you can see now it says down here the months as well. Okay. And that changes our key to say April, September, January. But we really want to take this a step further. And if you look at the tutorial for doing pie charts under the spreadsheet task section, it tells you how to do this. I'm going to go through it again for you anyway. The easiest way to do this is when you, if you when you first create your spreadsheet, uh, your pie chart it will come up in this view chart design mode we can switch to that just by selecting the chart 
and then go into chart design. And what we're looking for is this quick layout button. And when you click on that, there's some predefined layouts for pie charts. Now we wanted to show the values for each month. So all we're going to use is what either this one here, which shows percentages, this one here that shows values. So we can see, for instance, August made up 10% of the, the total, April made up 24% and so on. Or if we use the one below, it shows that August was 6,222, April was 15,000 and so on. This is the one we want. So let's click on that. The And then we need to do a couple of things. We need to get these outside of the pie chart. So to do that, we go to the plus sign, go to data labels, and then go to this little triangle. And we want outside end. And I don't know if you can see the other problem we've got there is we don't have a chart title. So I'm going to add that in there. Be aware when you use this quick layout, though, it raises any other settings you've done and puts it back to that. So if you've created a chart title, it will reset it. So I'm going to call this total four months. Make that look like a tile by making it. I've selected the box. I'm going to go to home, make it bold, italic and underline and a couple of sizes bigger. And there we have our charts.